What's going on, guys? Welcome back to the Contractor Secrets Podcast. Today, I sit down with Andre and Carr of Improvey, a new app that allow homeowners to connect with contractors and contractors connect with homeowners that takes the business out of the contractor's hands and into the hands of Improvey. I love the concept. I love the idea. And it sounds like Andre and Carr are on their way to leading the way in terms of the execution. We talk about that. We talk about what it's going to take for a service like this to really work, what hurdles and challenges they're going through, and uh, also allowing the listeners of this podcast to potentially be a part of this. So super cool. Uh, these guys are awesome, and I think you're going to get a lot out of this episode today. So thanks again for listening to the Contractor Secrets Podcast. Uh, you can actually find information about uh, Improvey in the description of uh, this podcast. And it starts right now. The big question you need to ask yourself every day is, do I own a job or do I own a business? And unfortunately, the majority of contractors out there own a job. That's right. They're a slave to their own business. But the other side of the fence is so much greener. It's so much better. And that's when you're finally fully in control of your destiny, your freedom, your time. And that's what Contractor Secrets is about. It's about taking back our time, building a business with systems, standards, values, procedures, putting yourself in the driver's seat, and that's what it's about. So I'm excited. I'm happy to have you here. Let's dive into the Contractor Secrets Podcast. What is going on, everyone? I am here with Carr and Andre. Uh, they are the head honchos at Improvey, which I first really heard about um, last week. They sat in on a trip jobs demo, and we got to talking a little bit about what they do and how they're trying to uh, bring a really cool idea to the painting industry. Um, and I'm really just here to listen and learn again, cause it's so cool. Uh, welcome to the show, Andre Carr. Uh, Andre, why don't you kick us off, man? Why don't you tell us uh, a little bit about this thing? I know that, uh, you know, it takes a lot to start something and tell us what the uh, motivation behind it was, how you got in the business and, uh, tell us a little bit about improving, man. Absolutely. So I'll, I'll start with a little bit about my background in the industry um, and just in general in home services and being around business owners. So growing up, I saw my mom just work tirelessly as a small business owner herself. She ran a cleaning company and she was, you know, struggling with finding new clients, managing appointments, all the things that you, you know, contractors kind of deal with as well. Uh, and she was an immigrant from Poland. So she worked her butt off every single day to keep her business afloat with really little to no nothing to, to show for it at the end of the day. So, you know, myself, I started in the painting industry uh, 15 years ago in college. Um, I worked with College Works Painting. Um, that was kind of my first uh, uh, dipping my toes in the industry. And, and I was in charge of launching new divisions for them. And then years later, I, I launched uh, third gen painting, which was uh, we turned into a multi-million dollar uh, painting business in the Midwest. And then that led to a successful exit. So um, now over that time, that time span of seeing my mom as a small business owner and then seeing kind of like the struggles of actually running a small business um, and launching from scratch, you know, nothing, not a ton has changed with the things that she dealt with as a small business owner that I saw myself deal with and then other painting contractors within the space and, um, you know, Improvey was created to change that. We believe that, you know, there's a better way for um, certain aspects of this industry to operate. And we were built with the goal of taking my mom's experience as a small business owner and fast forwarding that to a point where she can run a sustainable, uh, great business without, you know, spending a hundred hours a day or you know, a week trying to run things. So that's, that's kind of the antithesis and Improvey uses all of that data accrued over the last couple of decades and layers on technology to remove all of the pain points for contractors to empower them to do the best work of their careers. Uh, enabling a streamlined digitally native solution for contract or for homeowners to book painting services on demand. So a homeowner gets a, a quote, a firm quote in their inbox within 20 minutes. Um, they could book, uh, you know, right away, pay online and then start the job within two days. So that's kind of the nuts and bolts of it and the why behind it. But before I sort of dive into more, um, I'd love to introduce Carr, who I met during Techstars. We, we did Techstars Chicago together. He was a mentor and he, he came on board and 
man, oh man, he has been uh, incredible. So playing huh. what tech stars is by the way, when you, uh, yeah, tech stars is like a startup incubator, uh, accelerator. Okay. Like it's, that's, that's what they call it. And, um, and it basically connects you with just industry leaders and other startup founders to help fast forward, not only your business, but you as a founder and your team's uh, knowledge base. And, you know, you kind of learn from the bumps and bruises of, of how others have scaled companies. Um, within the space and outside the space and and you learn from that and so that's a three month month boot camp where it was just it was grinding man it reminded me of when i first launched my you know painting company wow. back in 2017 it was just 100 hours like craziness but car was like the light at the end of the tunnel he was one of the one of the incredible people that we met as a result and we're, we're so grateful to have him on the team so awesome car and, welcome my friend thank you thank you yeah, tech stars is a wild time i was uh, sleep texting andre I was like a sleepwalk and I was so it, like involved and obsessed with kind of like getting those operations up and running that I would dream about it. And I would think that the dream that, you know, was actually real. So I basically like, I text him, like I couldn't get into a meeting that was like a pivotal meeting. He's just like, dude, it's three in the morning. Of course we don't have a meeting. <laughs> it's like next morning I'd wake up to that. So it was, it was pretty funny. I love it, man. Uh, yeah. But yeah, uh, just real quickly, uh, my background, um, I spent a few years in finance and just really uh, always wanted to, to get back in terms of building a, a business. And so um, I built two uh, businesses in the event space and to Andre's point, you know, really had a lot of bumps and bruises along the way. You know, we were successfully able to scale it up, but it was just like, I knew that there were better ways to do it. And so um, spent some time with, uh, in a couple of different industries, just learning best practices of, hey, how do you get a scalable business going? Um, and got my MBA along the way, but just wanted to get back to find, you know, great uh, entrepreneurs that were looking to make a difference and kind of sharing with them and hopefully joining a really cool team. And through Techstars, I found, you know, exactly that uh, in Improvy was, you know, early on at that point, but they had an incredible business model, a team that was just hungry to, to make a difference and, and, you know, really help others. So it was, yeah, a, a great fit. I love it. And being in the startup space myself, when you have that that, you know, you, you, being an entrepreneur is hard in itself. Doing it alone is, is the, probably the worst. Bringing on some some perspective, which it sounds like you guys complement each other really well. And, yeah. and that's going to take you guys to extraordinary heights. It's awesome, man. It's good to hear that, that story. You know, one thing that I really want to boil down is really the problem that you guys are solving. Because you broke it down pretty simple to me when we spoke. You said, hey, this is like the Uber for house painting. Isn't that what you said? Would you guys you still... So yeah, you, know, you, you hate hearing that just in general because it's been overused over the years. But, you know, for us, it's like our, our whole goal is to take all those learnings over the decades of running successful businesses and streamlining the processes in the same way that, you know, an Uber would do. Uh, really what the what the comparison that we believe the, that's most, most apt in, in the Uber analogy is really what Uber did was bring new drivers and new people within uh, outside of the industry in the industry because of their model. So a new generation of drivers that wouldn't have been, I mean, what kid wants to grow up to be a, ca a taxi cab driver, right? Um, our goal is to bring that same, you know, um, generational appeal to the trades, right? And improve starting with painting and, and our background, uh, we want to expand to I think it, yeah. I think it's wide open. I think that, uh, as we continue to progress, dude, I'd say if I had, you know, if you look at my following, which I can't put a number on it, it just I think you're 80, at 70,000 right now, right? 80, some, some, I don't know. It's not that much, but okay. I'm just saying between 70 and 80% of them are between the ages of 22 and 35, you know, and I would say heavily leaning toward the majority of that being under the age of 30, that are looking at their parents who have done similar jobs and have said to themselves, the college degree that I went uh, was great for the parties. I need to make some good money. Uh, this industry that clearly lacks any sort of professionalism is wide open. And it would be really convenient for someone to be able to step into the industry yeah. without having to do all of the things that is required now. I mean, really, because if you want to get into this industry and succeed, administration, sales, marketing, uh, everything, you know, and, and if go to the paint store, all that arranging paint colors, all those things. There's, oh my it's just goodness. like, it's ridiculous. I remember it's doing like 18 different test patches for a customer at some point 
for a, for an exterior a couple of years ago. And I'm just like, this is enough. I can't like, it's I was about lot. to quit right there. Uh, it's a lot, you know. but I will say though, that it takes a certain skill set to be able to master all those areas of business. You, you had a successful exit. You had the master marketing, you have to master sales, production, so on and so forth. There's still a shortage of good labor. There's a shortage of good labor that communicates well. So I like the idea that you're saying, hey, this is going to be something that attracts the younger generation to be able to meet some of the demand in this world. Now, I will say, though, mm -hmm. can you take someone off the street and just have them paint to a high standard is that doesn't that devalue the trade in the sense that hey isn't there a barrier barrier to entry here how do you guys combat that you know for us it's it's less about that that's more of a you know midterm to long term sort of vision unlocking you know new trade labor pools but really when it comes down to it you know there's over 200,000 um painting contractors in the United States 86% of which are sole proprietors. And so these sole proprietors are going through their year. It's like, it's like um, feast or famine, either they're too busy, overbooked or they, they don't have enough work, you know, to, to keep their business afloat. And that's, that's who, um, uh, those are the, those are the providers that thrive on our platform. The ones that not only have gotten started, but hit a certain level, uh, either they're going from the commercial space, you know, they've been working with a GC for a couple of years, and now they have to keep, you know, they've scaled up their business to handle that. And now what, what are they going to do? Uh, typically, they'll hop on Angie's list and all that stuff, but they're too busy managing the job site to follow up. I mean, drip job certainly helps uh, with follow ups, but um, to follow up in time to grab that lead, even using the lead service like Angie. You've got to have a software to help them because it's such a dire need, right? Because, but, mm. but, and that pivots me to this. You're absolutely right. You have all of these sole proprietors, even guys that work for painting companies that just maybe want to take some side work, right? How do they plug into anything uh, other than a lead service where if you type in, in my group, Hey, what's been your experience with Angie leads? Forget sure. it. I mean, you're, you're dead in the water. If that was what you were basing your decision on whether or not to go with them off of was, was what the comments say, right? So you know that the industry understands that these companies aren't any good. They just provide you the lead. But why Improvey? Because to the average consumer, you would see something like Improvey at first glance and say, well, they're just selling me leads. What what makes you any different? Yeah, so that's that's the, the lead process is kind of where we start, right? We're able ah, to- Ah, that's where you start, see? Because- Exactly, Andy, not that, that's where the handoff- That's where they end. end. Exactly, precisely. That's it, here's your lead, yeah. good luck, buddy. And then I got to come in with a software and be like, all right, we'll, we'll take care of you, come on. <laughs> well, that's the problem. It's like those guys get those leads, they'll, it's a race to the bottom. And, you know, people will Google, you know, how much, uh, in, you know, how much does this cost, interior paint job or exterior right. paint job? And guess who's, who's ranking for that? Angie's List, Home Advisor. And guess what? Their margins, the, the, the prices they're showing, right? They're trying to become the central source of truth for homeowners and contractors. They're incentivized to cut those prices that they show. So the contract, you know, this is a $4,000 job. Hey, I looked online. This is actually $2,000 job. Angie's List. Said, they don't oh. care really because they're just worried about their customers. We're not their customers. Precisely. You know, we are not. So if they want to show the lowest price, because if they show a high price, why would somebody even request an estimate? Exactly. That sucks. Exactly. It does. So but yeah, I see what you're And so not only the pricing, but also the booking, all the payments, all of our guys get paid two days within 48 hours of the job. You know, there's no net 30s, no net 15s. And really what we're built is to empower them, right? So the we're tracking our internal KPIs are tracking how happy our contractors are from a job to job basis. Are they making more with Improvey and are, they, are their lives better with Improvey than without? That That's our North Star. Everything you know else, everything you know else happens because like of that. You have yeah. these contractors that are clearly frustrated. They're yeah. good at what they do. They're not planning on growing a business. They're not planning on growing teams because I don't, I could be wrong. I mean, you can serve them, but those teams need to be in full control of every dollar on that profit margin to sustain. So you pretty much know at this stage, I could be wrong, but those sole props, those one man teams, those guys, or maybe one or two guys are your ideal customers, correct? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, are, guys, the guys that have are, are just either that or have a crew, crew and a half, you know, 
some a part-time guy yeah. that they right. have to lay so off. So I'm with, visualizing, yeah. I'm visualizing their experience through this. And essentially the way I see it is this, they finish a job on Friday. They're, they're, they're caked, man. They're, they, they just, you know, yeah. they busted, butt. they did a great job. Whatever you guys have in terms of an internal process allows, you know, the customer to rate them great. They did an awesome job. And then guy, you know, winds down after Saturday and pulls up the Improvey app or whatever. And, accepts a job in the local area and he's on to the next one. Right. Yeah. And it's like, that's cool, man. Like to be able for him to just be able to just look at a queue of, of potential jobs. He's already approved through you. He gets connected with that customer. The instructions are right there. The colors, the customer wants the price of the jobs right there, what he's getting paid, so on and so forth. There's something there. But I believe it's just who does it the fastest and who has the best network of contractors is going to win the game. Sure. To yeah. where it's almost like there's a waiting list to be part of your network, right? And I know you've probably thought about this, but that's probably what I think will win the game. You yeah. know, um, what do you guys think about that? Yeah, our current wait list, how many contractors do we have on our current wait list in our markets? I think we're about like 120 right now, something like that. Total, we've had uh, a total of 275 uh, apply, I think in the last like four four months, something like that. And so one of the things, Tanner, to your question earlier is, you know, how do we how do we separate the folks that are, you know, just picked up a paintbrush at the store for the first time and, you know, say that they're a painter uh, with the folks that really know what they're doing. You know, what we look for are a couple of things. We look for liability insurance. You know, did you do you have your stuff together enough for that? And then do you carry workers' compensation insurance? Because if you've decided to make that investment in yourself, you're you're really serious uh, about the about the profession. Great. And, That's a good you know, filtering out metric, I will say. Yeah, it's uh, you know, and, and we do get other folks that will apply in. And um, while we can't necessarily say, great, we can we can take off, you know, off with you, we can refer them over to other crews and say, you know, as you're trying to build up your crew. That's a, a connection that we can make, and you know they can then work under uh, somebody else's uh, coverage there. So it's it's a pretty um, you know good system that we have right now. But we're again trying to encourage as many people to be involved as possible. Yeah. So with that said, right? So you have this system; it's working. People are excited about it. So in terms of your responsibility, it's not just the contractor; it is to the homeowner. So you're really taking on where you and I both agree from our previous little bit of a conversation is that, you know, we, we don't really feel like we are the home advisors customer, right? You are making it seem like, yes, your customers, your customers are both the, the supply and the demand. So how are you guys managing the demand side? How are you giving the customers a great experience? What are you doing to ensure that they feel safe and that they return to Improvey for the next project because you yeah. can't run a business like this without that being a North Star because what I've seen with Angie and Home Advisor is although, yes, they suck on the customers, on the contractor side, but guess what? They are very, very good at getting people to come back. So what has that been like for you? You know, for us, I think when we, the reason I say the contractors are North Star is because, well, when we take care of them, they take care of our customers. And uh, from the, you know, we, we launched our, our, we were the first full year in business last year um, in Chicago. Uh, we launched our mobile MVP the quarter before, quarter or two before. And, you know, we've generated, I think, over 150 reviews, 170 reviews between our Chicago land area uh, locations. And we've been actually, because of our system, we're able to generate a clip of five-star reviews that is like four times what I what I did with my traditional painting company, and uh, that's actually catapulted us in the Chicago area as the highest one of the highest-rated painting contractors in Chicago history online within a year. That's awesome. Yeah, and that's yeah, that's. Great. But you're right. It, we have to serve both sides, and that supply and demand e equilibrium is super important super important that's where the data comes in and that's where so, some of our matching technology comes in because guess what we don't accept all jobs we say we have a certain prototype of a job that we know is going to be profitable for our contractors that we're we're able to fulfill the demand and and ensure an incredible experience 
And, um, and so we stick to that, right? So we'll, we'll turn down jobs if it doesn't fit that criteria. And then we take the data from the contractor performance, right? There's certain crews that are focused on exteriors, just crush exteriors or crush, you know, um, you know, two floors and, and below type, type jobs. So we're tracking the data where, okay, we know that you can knock out trim at double the clip of the next crew. This is a trim and crown molding job. This is the ideal match. We know you're going to, you're going to do great. We know the customer is going to be blown away. And that's, that's really the, the last key of that, that puzzle there. And that's what we're finding out. And, and as we grow, we're going to get better and better at that uh, as we build that model. Does it start with a questionnaire on the contractor side? Does it start with identifying customer satisfaction and then going back to that job and identifying what the metrics were, or excuse me, what the uh, specifications were on that job and then maybe like assigning it to their profile or like, how are you even staying on top of all that? I mean, that sounds pretty robust. Yeah, no, we're using, we're, we're starting to use an AI model to start uh, making those connection for us, uh, connections for us because we're recording all of the data points that we need, uh, both in terms of onboarding the cost, uh, contractor, their response times, you know, that critical moment, that first day of the job when you show up and your crew looks around the job, you know, 8 a.m., we're tracking how, you know, how long it's going to take them to that, you know, they, they're, they, they're 45 minutes away, there's job starts in 30 minutes, there's a yellow flag there. And so part of it is, is taking those data points of the things that we don't really think about as painting contractors that we know are important, but the marginal data in between that is really the key to unlocking this at a higher scale. And because really what our ultimate vision is not only painting services, but going into every fragmented, highly fragmented uh, home service space uh, that's known for a bad customer service, like flooring, you know, there's other, other trades out there that, you know, have the same dynamics. And, and we want to take all of those contractors and the ones that we want to, we want to sort of empower on the platform, make their lives better. You know, like when it comes down to it, like my, my father-in-law was a, a flooring contractor uh, growing up and my mom passed away in, in 2013. Um, and, you know, before she passed, she would literally like do all the customer phone calls and all the collections and all that stuff. Right, and he right. was like, he, he, I mean, at he some point, lost. He, was, yeah. he wasn't able to uh, actually collect on 50% of his projects. Wow. And then, and then she passed and then she didn't, he didn't have that. And I'm like, okay, I can make, I could make all these calls and deal with, you know, look GCs in the eye and say, pay me. This is not right. Right. For him. But you know, I, I look at that opportunity to make his life better um, as a contractor, especially like the first generation side of it, you know, a barrier to, to end or not a barrier for him was, you know, he didn't, he didn't know fluent English, like he was parsed English. And especially when it comes to like demanding from pay, uh, uh, payments from a GC that, you know, is known for kind of leaving you high and dry. Yeah, I mean, or, there's so many yeah. cases like that. I mean, it's like, you know, and I think what's really cool is the why behind this is really good. I think you're going to find, and I know you know this, but there's more good out there than bad people that see this and, and all they need to do is get this notification, accept this job, perform the job and get paid one time. And yeah. then, you know, they're like, well, that was easy, you know? And I think um, that's what's, that's what I love about innovation is because this is a major need uh, for this sector of our economy where, you know, the biggest hurdle that they have in this industry is their inability to manage a business. Um, but I want to kind of take it back because the audience of this, that listen to this podcast aren't always the people that you serve. And I wanted to kind of bridge that together because there's certain things that they can learn from you in a sense of what you're doing. And it's really simple at the core. You probably would shake your head that now, but you'd say this, this your day is probably chaotic with all of this. And, and I know that, but I just want to know that want, want you to know that the way I see it is this, you found a way to, to connect supply and demand. You are doing it in a way that benefits the customer and the contractor. And I'm doing the same thing in my painting business. When a customer comes to me and they have specific needs, wants, and desires, maybe specific job type, I have a specific crew member that I usually assign to them. I just don't just randomly throw somebody in there. I may I actually pick which one of my crews would be best suited for this person to give them an optimal experience, right? You're just doing that on a macro level using different data points, but I think it's 
I think it's brilliant. I think if you can always keep that personal touch as, as large as you grow to the best of your capabilities, then you have no problem ever being, you know, ever being successful because that's just such a successful metric. I think it's really cool. Tanner, I think that's exactly kind of hitting on what makes this different um, is that you can't take the personal touch out of projects like this. And it comes down to, and at its core, we're an expectation setting company. And it's taking the customer expectations and those contractor expectations and making sure that they're aligned and making sure that they're fair and reasonable and everybody's on that same page. Because you're going to have customers that are going to demand, you know, unreasonable things that if it's not kind of addressed early on, they're going to feel like it's, you know, totally understandable that, you know, somebody stays till three in the morning, you know, until it's done on the first day or whatever it is. Um, right. So it's, it's setting those expectations on that side, as well as on the contractor side of, hey, you know, here's when, uh, you know, you need to be there. Here's the timeline that they have. Here's how the, you know, project is going to go. Yeah, we need to protect the, the floors. Like there's, it's not optional to, uh, to, you know, first tape everything off and, and whatnot. Um, you know, and that's, that's really the difference and, and being clear up front on, on both sides. And that's something I think that others could do around the industry as well. And it's something that's just a principle or it's a, um, it's a habit. Once you start doing it, it, it becomes easier and easier, but you got to start. What now let's flip this to the other side. Cause I'm interested to hear, you know, you working remotely with people that you've probably never met in person. Um, have you gotten a phone call <laughs> about uh, anything that hasn't went right? I mean, is this, is this an area of your business that has happened or have you been perfect this far? Yeah. I mean, it's, it, it, it's, when it comes down to it, like mistakes happen, right? So for example, I know there was a couple of months ago, we had one of our, our painters, our, our, our crews, and he was just getting started. You know, we had an extension pole and guess what? The extension pole kind of, you know, he overextended it, ended up hitting like uh, a little console piece, uh, like from Crate and Barrel or some, some expensive place um, at, the, at the homeowner's home. And, you know, for all intents and purposes, right? Like the homeowner, would have been pretty pissed off. Uh, the contractor would have been pretty pissed off. We could have said, hey, contractor, uh, take, you know, you're not getting paid on this job. We actually reimbursed the homeowner. We still paid the contractor, made sure he was he was uh, above break even on that job and, and went above and beyond. And that's, that's really, you know, it's fires are going, or not fires, but uh, mistakes are going to happen. Really 80%, 90% of, 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 is of mitigating that that actual experience or whatever that mistake is how you respond. And that's where we come in for the contractor because they're, they don't have the time to, to deal with that. They don't, we don't want them to worry about getting paid in those instances, right? And so, so it does happen, breakage does happen. However, it's all about our response and our, our, our plan when we do respond uh, to keep that North Star in mind, right? We went above and beyond for the contractor and homeowner. Was it the best business decision from a, you know, uh, revenue standpoint and uh, profit standpoint for us? No, but that's not, not not our north star. Our north star is to make the lives of contractors better so they could do great work for our consumers. And and so that's that's you know one example. It happens, but it's all about how you respond. Like we don't have perfect reviews. We have very very high reviews, but there's there's going to be instances where you know, mistakes happen. It's all about how you respond. And that's kind of where we, we pick up the ball and, and run with it. So. I think that's a pretty great example. And I think that, you know, and in, in, again, taking this to a more of a granular level, you guys are macro here and I just want to make sure I relate it. I mean, the principle of, you know, keeping your, keeping your customers and your contractors as, as, as the highest priority and not just the bottom line is a great business strategy because ultimately that customer is usually right, you know, and you could have taken it, you know, however you wanted to take it and took that money from the contractor and made him pay for it. And what does that do? It creates a me versus you. And I always try to avoid those, you know, even though, yeah, it sucks. I had somebody spill a whole five gallon bucket of paint right in front of me on a whole driveway. Not yep. only did it cost me the whole five bucket of paint, then I had to get a pressure washing company over there to actually clean it. It delayed the job. I mean, this turned into like a thousand dollar thing. Yeah. And it's like, I could have easily said, Hey, you're not getting paid for the whole week. What am I going to do? 
right? It was an accident. So I think, uh, you know, it's good business. Obviously, if it happens eight times, then you say, listen, I don't think this is a good fit, you know? <laughs> um, you know, so where do you guys, you know, where do you guys see yourself uh, in five years? And do you really feel as though, and I know the answer is probably yes, but do you really feel as though that uh, this is going to have a major, major impact on the way that homeowners buy uh, services from contractors and at this stage, do you feel like you guys are leading the pack? Is there anyone else in terms of competition that you feel as though is doing something similar, but not obviously it's not you guys, mm -hmm. but who is there anyone else doing this that you've seen that you feel as though, uh, you know, is a, is a direct competitor? Yeah, I, I, I mean, I know there's companies that have done it, you know, Paint Zen comes to mind. Um, I certainly studied their model quite a bit um, before launching this um, in terms of just our, our model. I don't, I don't know that it exists. Perhaps it does. Um, but I haven't uh, personally heard of anyone other than paint Zen, you know, outside of them, you know, I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if you like, for example, Angie's list, uh, paired together with Walmart. Right. So we did customer interviews a long time ago or a couple of a uh, year and a half ago, where we know that the second you get a new couch, you know, uh, that's when you start painting your, the entire place. Like there's, there's certain indicators of, 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 you know, before somebody buys painting services that we were, we were getting insights on. And I know they use that insight, but here's the deal. When it comes down to an Angie's list, trying to, trying to, you know, generate more leads for contractors and, and maybe provide more tools, all that stuff. Like when it comes down to it, they have a track record that is that would be like Angie's like, list or, or Angie creating a CRM and expecting people to flock to it. And they have, they, they, you know, house did that a little bit. With house did that. No one, yeah. I've never met anyone that uses it. But guess, yeah, but guess, and the reason why is because it wasn't created with the contractor in mind, right? It was created. Yeah, exactly. It was created with their system in mind to, to maximize High leads. Yeah. Precisely. And so that's where that's the difference. And, 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 you know, perhaps somebody comes along and, and is focused on the contractor and that's okay. We're okay with that, that this industry is wide open, but we do believe that, you know, with, with, when we have the right intentions in mind and being an industry insider, as opposed to some, somebody from Silicon Valley, you know, coming in from MIT thinking they understand our business, they could on a pen, you know, on, on a spreadsheet. But when it comes down to it, like if you are, if you don't have the right intent, uh, you, you're going to have to, you know, what was Angie's list? Angie's list is now Angie, right? Rebranded. What was Home Advisor before? Service Magic or, serv or Service Master? They got right. so bad at serving their contractors, they had to change their name, right? Right. And so that's 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 what Dude, it. Dude, I think about it all the time. I'm thinking there's so right. many things these guys could have done differently. First of all, I don't know, and somebody's going to laugh at this. Like if you buy leads from them, and you have to uh, request the credit. It's almost like something you got to plan out during your day and get ready for the fight. It's almost like a fight. Like, it's like, all right, I got my evidence here. I emailed that person. The email didn't work. The phone call didn't work. All right, I'm ready. And then you request the, the credit and you're genuine. Let's just assume that you're not lying. Sure. Oh, I'm sorry. There's nothing we can do there. Well, how am I supposed to sell this job that I just paid a hundred dollars for when the person tells me, or they didn't answer. That's one, but they tell me that they didn't mean to do it. Yeah. Well, that's they what happens when an SEO, an incredible SEO company that generates leads tries to go into serving contractors and, and right. say, you know, like, Hey, props hats off to them. They are one of the most incredible SEO machines I've ever seen, but that's it. Yeah. You know, and it's like, if you're focusing on the contractor and actually caring that they actually convert the leads that you're giving them, yeah. they're probably going to stay around. You know, for me, it's insane that at the point of, you know, what, what Angie's doing, it's like, first of all, it's so confusing what they're doing. I don't know if you guys have stayed up with, with their new branding. It's horrible. I mean, it's absolutely horrible and confusing. They have Angie leads, they have Angie ads, and I think they still have Angie's list. What's the difference? I really don't know. <laughs> I don't know. And, and really what it comes down to, like people hop on Google first. They, yeah. they Google they, painters, they Chicago, Google. painters right. near me, all that first. They're not Googling Angie's List painters. Right. No, so. not so much. Not so much. So anyway, long story short, no, it's really cool. You guys are coming in and, and taking some ownership for those. And, and honestly, your best customers are the ones that feel, feel, uh, 
unfortunately, they feel powerless. And I'll say that from my 30,000 foot view of the industry, just because I run the group and I talk to contractors every, almost every day. And there's some that I run into that are just powerless because they don't trust Angie leads. And I use them because I can, and I have the systems in place and I know how to sell, yeah. right? You can't expect that out of someone like your father and father-in-law or my father-in-law or anyone that's not a natural salesperson to know lead nurturing, right? So although yes, drip jobs can help with that. We talked about that, but I'm saying this, when it comes down to it, it's like they feel powerless because what other options do they have to get their name out there? They could be better than us in terms of their skill set, but no one can find them, right? And yeah. it sucks because they have to rely heavily on word of mouth. But what's happening with word of mouth as we continue on this journey of, of, of entering into this new era? What's happening? No one's really handing out business cards to their friends as much as they were before. Would you guys agree? Yeah, I haven't had a business card since 2017. <laughs> right? And then the problem with that is, is that because of everyone's apprehension to give someone a poor experience and then be held accountable for that poor experience, right? So if I have a flooring contractor that did a good job on the floors and my neighbor asks me for their number and that guy doesn't deliver the same, if not better result, right? then I know that I'm going to be sort of held accountable subconsciously. They're going to think, well, great. Thanks for giving me the guy that literally ruined my house. <laughs> you know, that's a thought that happens. So it's like, you know, with what you're creating on this online trust system and the ability for these people to get their names out there, I think it's awesome. I think that if you continue to do what you're doing personally from an outsider's point of view, nothing's really stopping you. I mean, it's just, uh, it's an awesome idea. I think it's great. How do people sign up? Yeah. So, so you hop on improvey.com uh, and you send us a message uh, via our jobs portal there. Um, or uh, yeah, you just Google us and our, our information is all over the net. So, um, or reach out to uh, contact at improvey.com uh, if you're a contractor looking for, you know, to fill your schedule and potentially uh, use us as a springboard for your business. Um, improvey, home improvement made groovy, I M P R O O V Y.com. That was the only variation came of came up with the, Was that you, Carl? <laughs> well, that, was, that was the cheapest domain option yeah. out of like 3,000. I was improving, yeah, yeah. So it's good. I like the name. I, I, we kind of stumbled upon it, didn't we? It meant to be, right? So, wait, you bought in, wait, it's improving.com. You got the dot com, yeah, yeah, exactly. ah, it's cool. Yeah, yeah. improving.com. It's it's a it's a beautiful brand. Um, from, from my perspective, I think it's great. And then, uh, so wait, it's improvy home improvement made groovy. Yeah, I, that's you know. You guys I, need a Super Bowl commercial, and you'll be set. Tanner, that's the craziest thing I ever heard because I literally have been like, I already have the song queued up. It, you know, the improvy sort of song of of like uh, uh, improvy do, 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 on a Sunday afternoon. Made groovy. No, no, it's, it's, it's that's what it is. It's like you could spend your weekend painting your place, or or you can you can do yeah. you know. That's that's kind of how you should bring back like the 70s theme, man. Like oh, these are your customers, right. man. Right. <laughs> right now they are, you know, you could really get going with like a nice hippie theme. And then like, you know, it's like you're back in the 70s. <laughs> no. yeah, that's Those keywords are trending. <laughs> that, that's the 70s decor items are trying to Google trends. I love it, dude. That's so cool, itself. man. You know, yeah. you guys, I wish you nothing but success, man. I'd love to hear as we, as you progress. Happy to bring you back on. And and I just want to make it clear. They don't just have to be 100% um, committed to you, right? I mean, that could just be an extension of their business, right? That's good. One, of, one of the best parts about this model is that you don't have to take a job at any point in time and that doesn't like cut you out of our family. So if once you're onboarded, you're just going to be getting a flow, you know, if it's best suited to you of these jobs. And you can say no, and we're not going to stop sending you jobs. You know, we would far, far, far prefer you to just you know be like, hey, you know, Think of me again in future, as opposed to take it. And then you have to squeeze that job, you know, and enforce it. Like that's where we, you know, can get into, uh, into trouble as opposed to just finding great folks that, you know, Hey, they, they just tack tackle that. And when I mentioned earlier that, you know, we have a, a wait list, you know, there are also areas where we still need uh, additional folks. And so, um, you know, people that are applying, we can get them jobs sometimes, you know, next week. Uh, once we, once you go through the onboarding process. Um, so it just depends upon kind of geography and, and uh, skill set and all of that. So, yeah. So if you're listening to this, I mean, if you feel as though that you could use a couple extra jobs, 
and you believe in what Andre and Carr are doing, which I do. That's why I brought them here. Um, plus, they like drip jobs, so <laughs> they're not too bad at guys. Even though I think you guys will eventually have your own internal software. You have to. I mean, it's like you guys. The drip jobs that. definitely helps. That's- yeah, it helps. I mean, but in terms of just like, you know, I visualize this. You know, I'm a visionary. I have to say it. Like, I visualize a customer seeing this and then maybe getting their contractor profile, maybe even a welcome video from the contractor. Maybe that's part of your onboarding process, a 30 second intro video where it it eliminates that question mark, you know, that like who's showing up, right? You know, because one thing that I learned, and this was actually done by accident. I actually just wanted a little promo video to run as an ad for my painting business. And I know like, yeah, I would do a couple videos. Like I'd be like, all right, Hey, you know, we're at this job. And like, and then I, I asked my friend who does media, I said, can you please do a promo video for me? And listen, I put it on the head of my, my website. I can't tell you how many people tell me, oh, we watched your video. And in that video, you have my teammates talking, you have me talking. And it's like, it kind of just makes them feel better about hiring me sight unseen because there are people that move here that can't get into the house. And I just email them a quote, you know, and they'll mention that. So it's so cool you know, how, how even some video or, or photos can really uh, bridge that gap. Has, has that been something you guys have thought about? You know, quite a bit. And I, I love that idea. I think maybe you should be hopping on here soon. Hey, man. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm, I love, I love innovation, man. I think that's what drives it, it, innovation. It can save lives. It can help people. It can create uh, new opportunities. You know, again, I think about that contractor that you're talking about maybe doesn't speak the best English or maybe just isn't technologically savvy. I mean, you have people that are between the ages of 50 to 80 that don't have any retirement funds set up that don't understand this new economy of lead generation SEO. And they're getting passed by guys like me just because that's business. And I can't slow down just because I feel bad. I have to keep moving, but I feel bad because there's guys like that, that from 50 to 80, they're amazing painters, amazing contractors, really great. Uh, but feel as though their pipelines dry and that's not fair. They shouldn't have a dry pipeline, you know, and I think it's really cool that you guys have that North star to fill it for them without them having to do the things that they're not good at. Yeah. So in right now, work- I was going to say just in terms of our geographies right now, we're in Chicago, St. Louis, Ann Arbor, and we're going to be uh, moving into Dallas um, in the spring here. Chicago, I- St. Louis, Ann Arbor, Michigan, and where? Uh, and then we're going to be going into Dallas uh, in the spring. Okay. And uh, we've got Come a couple. to Florida, man. I mean, there's so many contractors here. <laughs> Come to Florida. And, and Florida's and wide open. The licensing isn't that bad either. There's not many places that require a license. And being, you know, in frigid weather right now in Chicago, uh, Florida sounds pretty good, right? Year round exteriors, yeah. man. I'll, 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 any excuse to get out there. So. <laughs> so, all right. Well, listen, man, thank you guys. It was a pleasure. For, thanks for sharing this. Uh, I'll throw a link. I'm, I'm sure I'm sure you'll shoot me one if you could. I'll yeah. throw a link in the description here for them to uh, to inquire. Um, if they're outside of that service area, can they just get on a wait list? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So if you're interested, just fill it out. Um, and I I think based off of this podcast, you guys are going to get flooded. So get ready. <laughs> <laughs> so just fill it out, guys. Send me a link, um, Andre, and I'll, I'll put it on the description. Yeah, I just want to thank you for what you do and and. Hey, my pleasure. Everybody together in this industry. I think it's um, it's a long time coming, and it's it's with the right intention, and that's that's what I see, and it's genuine. It's we, we just you. wanted to appreciate that, you know. Absolutely, you. man. Yeah, I love innovation. You too, Car. Thanks, man. I know Car's a, a, a podcast listener. <laughs> indeed, indeed. Thank you, man. Uh, absolutely, that's no, great. He's doing great some fun. homework on you guys during the breakthroughs. He's the guy who emails you right after. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's awesome, man. Thank you. All right, guys. Listen, thanks again. Improvey, home improvement made improvey. All right, guys, see you. See you. Drip Jobs CRM is finally here. That's right. So, Drip Jobs is an automation platform for contractors, home service professionals. It's going to automatically follow up with your customers. It's going to allow you to send invoices, estimates. It's going to allow you to send out blast marketing emails to individuals based on where they are in the buying process. This software is next level. And I'm reaching out to you. You're a listener of this podcast, and I want you to be one of the first ones to give it a shot. So if you want to see what Drip Jobs can do for your business, I'd love for you to head over to dripjobs.com, 
sign up for a free demo and get your team involved and let us sit with you and show you how powerful this software is. It's going to save you time. It's going to make you money and you're going to love the features that are built into drip job. So if you want to check it out, head over to dripjobs.com and we will give you first priority being a podcast listener uh, to be one of the very first to try out drip jobs in your home service business. I'm super excited to share that with you and I'll catch you on the next episode.